Flying Focus Video Collective is a collective of uh, videographers and producers and we have the mission statement of um, voicing the voiceless. Um, we capture information that is either in the field, sometimes in studio, um, and it's collected locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally, and we distribute the same way. Uh, so the way we use uh, video as a tool for social change is to get that information that is um, allowing people to speak to other people, to themselves, and uh, in a way that is not dictated by a corporate media. So it's usually information that's not uh, carried in the corporate media. Um, Otherwise, it's uh, speakers that are visionaries or activists, and the information is often to other activists as well as to a general population. Uh, and it's the kind of information that we hope can be used uh, not just as background, but actually uh, the means of finding out what's going on, not to scare, not to frighten, but to be useful in making actual changes in uh, uh, social and political environments. Um, you know, there is that bumper sticker that says, kill your TV, but uh, the only people who seem to be interested in killing TVs are people who want to take over uh, populations. Somalia, uh, Italy, former Yugoslavia. The TV is stronger than the radio. Um, it may be in some ways stronger than um, the newspaper. Uh, and it, it leads to the question of why corporate interests find it too valuable to leave in the hands of non-professionals or non-corporate interests as volunteers of cable access seem to be. Now that it's a global community, it can be a little girl in uh, Kenya teaching how to um, get hospital equipment from one side of the country to another, as well as an activist in any given city trying to illustrate how you can get uh, police reform and what avenues you can take to get uh, changes to happen in a police force. The cliche of you can't change City Hall. It's an old cliche and it's certainly not true. Uh, activists have changed City Hall. They do it all the time. And of course it doesn't get publicized. We try to publicize that when it happens. Um, sometimes it takes a long time. And it certainly takes the initiative of, of at least one person and sometimes one person's enough. This may be electronic that we are doing and it is definitely educational, it's no, but it's no different than sitting around the campfire and telling stories. Uh, I use that illustration for two reasons. One, in that it conveys information from one person to another or one group to another. The other is that you're retelling the story because what happens in one generation may not get told to the next generation, or it may not be advantageous that it's told by the victor to the next generation. So those who have been part of a struggle or a, um, uh, a valiant struggle in terms of a fight or a valiant struggle in terms of just plain winning by continuing to do something, need to pass that on to the next generation, and the next generation, and the next generation. And sitting around a campfire, or a DVD, or uh, a telephone that plays uh, the message is what we're trying to, to get continue across. that information, not just from day to day, but from year and decade to decade because it has to be retold. The first stories that we did uh, 15 years ago, um, we're replaying now because they are just as pertinent and people 
uh, are finding it advantageous to see, well, what was done before? What mistakes were made? What were things that were valuable to use now? What can we leapfrog on to make the situation better? Which one should I do? Everything that you can do needs to be done. If your interest is X, put your heart into X. If your interest is Y, do that. They both need to be done and they all need to be done and probably all at the same time. You're supposedly neutral, uh, not taking a stand and so on. What you're really doing is you're collaborating with the world the way it is. We are revolutionaries because we love, because we love our sisters and brothers.